and edited by his disciple Swami Kriyananda. I'm speaking to you from Kameno Island, north of Seattle, and today's quatrain is number 41. I'll read it first. For is and is not, though with rule and line, and up and down without, I could define. Yea, yet and all I only cared to know was never deep in anything but wine. Hmm. Stanza 41. For is and is not though with rule and line, and up and down without I could define. I yet in all I only cared to know was never deep in anything but wine. Paraphrase. By theology, I was able to define God as is, or being, and matter as is not, that realm of false appearances which comprises non-existence. I could define the stages of spiritual awakening and those of spiritual descent. I could discourse on the hidden presence of spirit within matter. I discussed endlessly the complexities of natural law, Yet, with all my logic and my knowledge of scriptural lore, nothing ever truly held my interest except divine experience, the wine of ecstasy. So, Omar continues, he goes on to continue to encourage us to go beyond the seeming appearances into the one reality which is unchanging the self, the spirit. Earlier today, when I went for a run here on the island, I was listening to a discussion, about an hour-long discussion I found on YouTube, between the famous philosophers of the day, back when Ananda was founded out of the San Francisco Bay Area during the so-called Haight-Ashbury hippie days. And it was a conversation between Timothy Leary the king of psychedelics, between Alan Watts, uh, uh, the philosopher of those years who made the oneness philosophy of, of India and the Orient famous, but who secretly, privately was an alcoholic, Alan Ginsberg and Gary Snyder, two poets. Gary Snyder was the poet that Swami Kriyananda joined forces with to buy the original property in Nevada County, California, which formed the basis of what we now call the Meditation Retreat, which is six miles away from the Ananda village nearby. Their conversation in those days of psychedelics and so forth had to do with the numbers of young people dropping out, and that included uh, all of us who uh, dribbled into Ananda village to make it our home during those years, the 60s and 70s, and uh, thousands and thousands of other youth went north, west, south, and east uh, into intentional communities or uh, back-to-the-land type of living. And so they were talking about that as a trend of the time, which frankly didn't really materialize during their years. And um, the conversation ranged on the need of civilization to rediscover its roots. It's really the same spiritual conversation that's had in every age with different terms and terminology. Uh, Alan Watts, for example, made reference to Adam and Eve and eating the fruit of the tree of knowledge of uh, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And that theme, which is also replayed in the Book of Thoth from Egypt and in other creation myths, and it has to do with humanity's interest in, dependence upon logic and reason, attraction to the material universe, which in here he calls non-existence because ever-changing, the maya or illusion of reality given to us through the five senses, through our 
powers of logic and reason and, and uh, reactive feeling and emotions. That world which we create in our head between our ears becomes a barrier to the true reality that lies behind all seeming. And so this is a, this is a perennial theme. It is, in fact, what Aldous Huxley termed the perennial philosophy of the ages and sages of East and West, to seek to know thyself, which was the uh, a motto or a phrase or something posted on the um, uh, 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 Delphi, let's see, the Apollo, the Temple of Apollo, uh, in conjunction with the Del Oracle of Delphi in Greece. And so this is really what, what we're talking about. This is what a true spiritual scripture comes to remind us of our original face before God. There's an expression, one that I didn't grow up with, but I've heard that you, uh, the first 40 years of your life, you have the face you were born with, and after that, the face you have created. I don't know really what to make of that when I look at this face, but uh, in any case, it certainly isn't the face of the first 40 years. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we do lose our innocence. We lose our innocence at adolescence to many in many different ways and um, it usually goes downhill from there at least for a while until we begin to search for meaning if we do and to search for our lost innocence as so many um, stories and books suggest to us this is really what Omar is talking about to um, regain that innocence to regain that faith in in God, yes, the faith in the meaning of life, the faith in our destiny, the faith in the karma, however good or bad or attractively or unattractively uh, wrapped, uh, faith in life, self-confidence, you see, uh, a positive spin, if you like, on life. It's not really a spin. It's only a spin in relation to his pessimism, and so it's a step up from... Um, pessimism, but there is a transcendent state that accepts good and bad, as we would otherwise see it, as being equal. Isn't there that stanza in the Bhagavad Gita says that the sage looks upon, you know, a bar of gold, a rock, evildoers and, and lovers, etc., uh, with an equal eye or something like that? Well, that sounds a little bit cold and indifferent, and it's not really meant to be that. Equal means equally lovingly and <laughs> compassionately, um, but also equal in terms of that soul's response. The relationship with, let's say, your spouse and your family is going to be um, naturally different than it is with some passerby or a stranger, or if you're a teacher or a student. But Nonetheless, your response, your reaction to them, your degree of attachment, repulsion, or attraction is, is such that you remain in the self. This teaching, we can never really, um, well, we can always dismiss it, we can ignore it, and of course most people do, but it always comes back to those who seek the pearl of great price. So Omar continues to urge us to go beyond the logic and the reason. And as Lahiri Mahashai, the Param Guru of uh, Sri Yogananda, said, put away useless religious speculation. Go within and seek the Spirit. Okay, friends, seek the Spirit. Enjoy. Be good. And uh, today is Friday, so you won't see the Rubaiyat until Monday, which will be Padma's turn.